I spent 300 days in modded Stardew Valley. If this video can get to 1,000 likes, I'll make 400 days. Also, this video took more than 50 hours to produce, so please do subscribe. Enjoy the video. I woke up after a very long sleep to be greeted by the wizard asking me for Iridium. After accepting the quest, I noticed that some of my taro roots were ready, so I grabbed them all. I then wandered up to the trader and noticed that I could buy a banana sapling for five dragon teeth, so I decided to dedicate the day to collecting them. I quickly donated a ribcage to Professor Snail before running up to the volcano. I had terrible luck and only ended up getting one tooth, so I returned home and cleared my farm a little before heading off to bed. In the morning of day 202, I decided to make a list of goals for these 100 days, and I only had one main goal, unlock the Crimson Badlands. With that out of the way, I walked up to the trader and bought a tropical TV, because why not? After watching some 4K weather report, I took the boat back to the mainland where I headed up to Robins. I bought a furniture catalogue as well as a coop upgrade. I then returned home where I tended to my animals and flexed my new catalogue for the rest of the day. On day 203, I decided to get started on my goal of reaching the Crimson Badlands. The first thing I needed to do was complete Mr. Key's challenges since completing them was a requirement to getting there. So I went over to the battery box to see what I needed to do. Inside, there was a note saying bring a rainbow shell to the train station. Now this was fine until I realized that rainbow shells only spawned in summer and that I had none in my chests. I brainstormed for a bit and realized the only way I would be able to get one was in Mr. Key's heart of minds since they spawned in there. So I took the ship to Ginger Island and searched for walnuts for the remainder of the day. Day 204 was the ice fishing festival, so after doing a little bit of foraging, I left for the mainland. When I got there, I entered the festival, and after chatting with a couple of villagers, I started it. Let me just say that I don't really like this festival much because of how RNG-based it is. I caught every single fish that I hit almost perfectly, but I still lost because I caught like five green algae. Annoyed with my defeat, I returned home. On day 205, I decided to prep everything I needed to bring to Ginger Island so that I could get as many walnuts as possible. After making some seeds, grabbing some teeth, and doing a lot of other things, I set off to the beach. When I got there, Willie had just left, so I walked there. While at Ginger Island, I bought a banana tree and planted it, as well as planting my melon and garlic seeds. I then headed off to bed. In the morning of day 206, I foraged on the Ginger Island beach for a while before heading over to Leo's hut to say hello. I then cleared out the artifact area before running up to the volcano to get some loot. This turned out to be a very bad idea since I had bought no food at all and ended up passing out losing 5,000 gold. This was not a good day for Dave. On day 207, I once again spent the morning foraging and chopping trees. I then took the ship back home where I attended to my animals and set off to the train station in hopes of getting the wizard's magic ink. When I got there, I interacted with the statue and it flew away, revealing a cave behind it. When I went onto the teleport pad, I was taken to the witch's swamp where my way was blocked by a henchman. Since I didn't have enough time to gather some void mayonnaise, I just returned home. In the morning of day 208, I went to tend to my animals when a new duck hatched, which I named Grub. I then made some mayo before riding down to the beach and taking the boat to Ginger Island. There, I quickly grabbed some stuff for Gunter's birthday before heading right back home. I gave Gunter his gift, then rode up to the train station where I got a cutscene with Clint, who asked me to give him some iridium to blow up a rock. I then gave the goblin my mayo and grabbed the ink before wandering back home. On day 209, I tended to my animals before taking the boat to Ginger Island. Since it was a rainy day, I realized that I would get the first of the four gems I needed to complete the puzzle near Leo's home. So I scared the bird and grabbed the gem which I placed on the pedestal. I then returned to the mainland where I made a quick delivery to the wizard and cleared out my greenhouse for the rest of the day. In the morning of day 210, I tended to my animals before quickly taking the ship to Ginger Island where I gave the big frog my melon. I then returned where I bought a ticket to the desert and hopped on the bus. After grinding the skull caverns for the rest of the day, I eventually got my 20 iridium that I needed for Clint, then took the bus home. I left my home on day 211 excitedly to give my iridium and coal to Clint. After putting them in the box, nothing happened. Disappointed, I checked my journal and collected some items to give to people before completing their requests. I then headed down to the beach where I found the night market. I collected my free coffee, then descended into the depths where I fished for the rest of the day. 
On day 212, I decided to check on my wine before tending to my animals and heading straight to Ginger Island. There, I broke a bunch of muscle rocks and talked to the frog again before taking the boat back home. I then cleared out my greenhouse before riding down to the night market where I bought some goods then headed home to bed. In the morning of day 213, I got a message saying that an explosion was heard overnight, so I tended to my animals and headed over to the summit. Seeing as how peaceful it was, I decided to just sit on the bench and appreciate the view for a while. When I was finished, I rode down and blew up the quarry before giving the wizard a purple mushroom for his birthday, then heading home. On day 214, I was met at the door by the wizard who told me he wanted to teach me warp magic. So I followed him to his tower where he taught me how to create teleport pads. He then took me to a small area behind my farm and told me that we would warp time. When I opened my eyes, I had been taken to my enchanted grove, which was also connected to the wizard's warp hall. When I re-entered my enchanted grove, I noticed some fruits on the floor, which turned out to be just extremely overpowered. Delighted with my progress, I cleared at the farm quarry before heading off to bed. Day 215 was a very special day. It was a special day because when I arrived on Ginger Island, my crops were ready for inspection by the frog, who in turn gave me the remaining golden walnuts that I needed to complete the walnut room. I slowly walked in and was greeted by Mr. Key, who congratulated me. I then had a look around the prizes and the challenges before heading back home and going to bed. On day 216, I tended to my animals before heading straight over to Ginger Island so that I could start one of Mr. Key's challenges. So I headed over to the Walnut Room and started Mr. Key's Prismatic Range, which included me getting 100 items of 6 different colours. The first thing I did was complete yellow using sap, but sadly I didn't have enough time to start any of the other colours. On day 217, I was determined to complete Mr. Key's challenge, so I spent 20 golden walnuts creating a farm obelisk and teleporting home. There, I spent the majority of the day gathering all kinds of items that fit the colours. When I finally had all the items that I needed, I took the boat back to Ginger Island and deposited them. I then collected my 35 key gems, which I decided to save. I then walked back to my own home where I chilled in the enchanted grove before heading off to bed. In the morning of day 218, I already wanted to start a new key quest since I still needed the Harder Caves challenge to get the Rainbow Shell to complete the key challenges to unlock the Crimson Badlands. So I took the ship to Ginger Island and walked over to the Walnut Room. When I entered, I realized that the challenges that were available were exactly the same as before, so I had no choice but to choose the Skull Caverns one. With a big new challenge daunting in front of me, I returned home and got preparing. I prepared all day on day 219, I started out by travelling to Ginger Island to grab a bunch of pineapples for food before returning home and wandering over to the Adventurers Guild, where I built a teleport pad then bought 100 explosive ammo. I then bought even more bombs before running down to the Stardrop Saloon where I purchased the recipe to triple shot espresso. After quickly crafting up a warp totem, I excitedly went off to bed. I warped straight to Skull Caverns on day 220, ready to make it to the bottom. I ran over to the trader and realized that there was a very small problem. He only sold staircases on Sundays. It was Wednesday. So the only course of action I could take was wait for Wednesday, which I did. I killed the time by mostly fishing, talking to villagers, and attending the Feast of the Winter Star. Today was the day. The day that was the final day I had to complete the Harder Skull Caverns and today was also the day that I would complete it. But there was a problem straight off the bat, I didn't have a warp totem. This was not starting off well. But my bad luck ended right there, and even before midnight arrived, I had gotten to level 100 of the Skull Caverns. Incredibly happy with my success, I returned home and went to bed. That night, Grandpa visited me and told me how great my farm was looking and that he would be looking over me throughout my entire journey. I slept in anticipation of what I would accomplish in the new year. Day 225 was the first day of my third year in Stardew Valley, and to celebrate I decided to spend my key gems that I'd collected through my Skull Caverns challenge. 
So I hopped on the boat and wandered over to the walnut room. There I bought a horse flute and a key to the town, which teleports my horse to me whenever I play it, and means that I have access to the entire town at any time. But that night, something tragic happened. I had accepted the key fruit challenge, which involved me collecting key beans. So I had grabbed a bunch of bombs to help me chop trees when I accidentally placed one near my kegs and preserves jars. This is so sad. On day 226, I realized the sheer size of the key fruit challenge. I needed to ship 500 key fruits. They grow from key beans and take four days to mature. But after one harvest, the plant dies and they yield one fruit per harvest. And this is exactly why it took me just so long to complete. Let me explain the method of how I did this challenge. First, I spent the first couple of days collecting key beans and then planting them until I had a small harvest. I then put them all in seed makers approximately doubling my harvest every time. This worked fine until eventually I ran out of space for my crops so I just needed to wait for every harvest until I had 500. And finally, on day 247, I woke up and wandered outside to meet my fully grown key fruits that I needed to complete the challenge. I picked them and threw all 500 in the shipping bin. I was finally finished. I spent the rest of the day talking with the new wizard apprentice in town, as well as fishing and thinking of the rewards that I would reap the following morning. But as it turns out, day 248 was not the day that I could reap my rewards. It was the flower dance. Tomorrow, surely. On day 249, I went straight to Ginger Island. Nothing was going to stop me from collecting my rewards. And I was right, nothing did stop me. I ended up buying Pierre's missing stock list and a deconstructor. Happy with my loot, I returned to the mainland, gave Pierre his stock list, and spent the rest of the day harvesting fruit and chilling with the wizard. On day 250, I spent the morning crafting up a bunch of casks and placing them in my cellar. I then tended to my animals before going up to the terminated Jojomart and donating some wine to the bundle. I then planted a rare seed in my greenhouse and finally finished the day by giving Willy a lincod for a quest. Day 251 was the depressing day that I realized that all of the harder mines from Mr. Key to get the rainbow shell was useless because summer was two days away. Since I had nothing better to do, I took the bus to the desert where I bought a bunch of beech seeds for Mr. Key and starfruit seeds for wine, which I went home and planted in my greenhouse. I then tended to my animals before going to bed. In the morning of day 252, I attended to my animals before clearing out my greenhouse and heading into town to donate some things to the museum. I then decided to attempt to catch a gold star void salmon for the last bundle, so I rode over to the witch's swamp and got fishing. I eventually caught one after a very long fight, so I went home victorious. Day 253 was the first day of summer, which meant that I could finally get my rainbow shell. I hopped onto my horse and dashed all the way to the beach, hoping that a rainbow shell would have spawned. None had. Disappointed, I decided to explore down the eastern pier where I found a boat that took me to the Grampleton Fields. I then took the boat to Ginger Island to clear my farm a little and purchase a hat from Mr. Key before heading off to bed. On day 254, I grabbed some coconuts, then teleported home before once again rushing straight over to the beach in hopes of finding a rainbow shell. After almost giving up, I found one across the small bridge. I was very excited, so I grabbed it and rode over to the train station where I put it in the box. I immediately got another letter from Mr. Key saying to put 10 beets in Mayor Lewis's fridge, so I rode back to my farm, but my beets were still not ready for harvest. So sad. In the morning of day 255, I went straight down to the greenhouse to check on my beets. They still weren't ready, so I decided to go and donate a void salmon to the secret bundle and finish some journal quests. I found George relatively easily, but I spent literally the whole day looking for Pam to give her a battery pack, before remembering that she stands next to the bus the entire day. A very productive day. On day 256, I was very excited. I ran straight down to the greenhouse and went through the door. The beets still weren't ready, so instead I tended to my animals and went up to collect my forgotten Statue of Perfection before realizing that I was only one level on fishing off getting to level 10 in every profession. So I got fishing. Eventually night fell, so I threw all my fish in the shipping bin and headed to bed. 
And it was finally on day 257 when I walked into my greenhouse I found 15 fully grown beets. So I went over to Lewis's and put them in his fridge. I then got a note saying to give the sand dragon his last meal so I grabbed a solar essence and went to the desert. After placing it in his mouth I returned home and collected my club card. I then went into the adventurers guild to try get access to the crimson badlands but I realized that I needed to finish the enchanted grove storyline so I went over to the abandoned vineyard to make a teleport pad when I found another bundle on the floor. I couldn't read it so I asked the wizard who called his friend and it got a little bit confusing so I left and went home. On day 258 I attended to my animals before heading down to the western forest in search of the Sprite Springs. It took a while but eventually I found it and I was greeted by two Junimos named Claus and Angelica. After crossing the pond I was met by a field of sunflowers with ancient fruit and sweet gem berries scattered around. I also found a bunch of mushrooms behind a waterfall. I then bought a Santa hat and got a star drop before heading off to bed. In the morning of day 259, I remembered that I needed to get 200 star food for a Junimo in the abandoned vineyard, so I rode the bus straight over to the desert and bought the seeds. I then spent the rest of the entire day planting the seeds and putting in speed grow. On day 260, I went back down to the Sprite Springs in hope to get a teleport pad there, and luckily I was able to. I then thought that maybe I could place one in the Junimo Woods, so I went over there and I was able to place one. After a very long, confusing session, I was finally able to enter the Junimo area where they lived, and I was surprised at the goods they were selling. I then chilled at my enchanted grove before heading off to bed. Day 261 was the very exciting day that I realized that all I needed to do to unlock the Crimson Badlands was to give the abandoned vineyard 200 star fruit, so I excitedly waited as fast as I could. To kill the time, I decided to visit the Sprite Springs, the Junimos, and the Wizard before doing some quick maths and working out that on the 16th of summer, my star fruits would be ready. This was going to be a very long wait. But you watching don't have to wait. For the five days until the starfruit were ready, I just made wine, harvested hardwood, and went to bed. And the day had finally come. Day 268, the day that all of my star fruits were ready for harvest. I ran outside excitedly and picked them all before planting some poppies and riding straight over to the abandoned vineyard to drop off the star fruit. So I did and I waited and nothing happened. Disappointed, I returned home to tend to my animals and clear out my greenhouse before heading off to bed, hoping something would happen the following morning. I ran outside on day 269 to be greeted by nothing, so I tended to my animals and rode straight over to the abandoned vineyard. I went in and still nothing happened, so I gave up and went home. But on my way into my house I got a cutscene about the vineyard, so I dashed straight back and got to meet Apples, a Junimo that was living there. He said that he was going off to the village which is in the Crimson Badlands, so I went home confident that I would be able to go there the following morning. I once again ran outside on day 270 to be met with nothing, once again. So I once again tended to my animals and once again headed down to the abandoned vineyard and once again nothing happened. I thought that maybe I needed to wait a day so I went home and donated a bunch of stuff to the museum before heading off to bed. I once again ran straight to the abandoned vineyard on day 271, and believe it or not, something actually happened. I got a cutscene and I was able to place a warp point in the building, meaning that my enchanted grove was only one warp point off of finishing, the one to the Crimson Badlands, and this time I was sure something would happen the following morning, so after visiting the wizard I went straight to bed. Day 272 was the day that I had been waiting for. It was the day that I could go to the Crimson Badlands. When I woke up, there was a knock on the door, and it was the witch who took me to the Galdoran continent on top of a tall, dark tower. There, she showed me the area before teleporting away. So, I decided to go home, get some food, and adventure into the Crimson Badlands. There were so many monsters, such as slimes, mummies, and serpents, which I did my best to avoid. After a lot of exploring, I eventually found the entrance to Castle Village, but the entrance was blocked by a magical barrier. I also went fishing for a while and caught an undead fish. Eventually I started running low on food so I teleported home and headed off to bed. 
On day 273, I harvested some poppies, then straight away teleported to the Galdoran continent and ran into the Crimson Badlands. There were a lot of serpents, and even some really strong ones that really didn't want to die. Also, I didn't want to die, so I ran away and teleported home. I then put away my loot and realized that I had gotten 74 Void Essence from that one run. That's quite a lot. I accidentally just sat AFK outside the Stardrop Saloon on day 274. I think I was planning to buy coffee for speed, but I ended up just leaving my computer. So, that happened. My plan for day 275 was to quickly buy some coffee, then head straight to the Crimson Badlands. Gus came to his store at half past five. After grabbing a bunch of coffee, I gave Morgan a void egg and apples a duck feather before accidentally using all of my key seasoning, making triple shot espresso. Today did not go to plan. On day 276, I teleported straight to the Crimson Badlands and met Isaac again, and this time he was selling me things. Very expensive things. After buying a potion that increased my attack power, I ran all the way across the Badlands to reach the Iridium Mines. When I arrived, I was instantly overwhelmed by a heap of ghosts and mummies that did half my health in one attack. So I grabbed some Iridium and ran. When I got home, I put away my stuff and went to bed. Day 277 was the day that I discovered something great, the Haste Elixir. What does it do, you ask? Plus three speed. I could now outrun anything in the Badlands. So I sped all the way to the Iridium Mines and killed all of the ghosts and mummies and cleared out all the nodes. I then sped all the way back because why not? I then bought 10 more potions just for safekeeping. Day 278 was Leo's birthday, so instead of going to the Badlands, I headed off to Ginger Island. When I got there, I got a cutscene with Lance, who told me about the sunken ship. I then grabbed a mango and gave it to Leo, and he really liked it. With nothing else to do, I rode up to the artifact area to hopefully get a couple new bones. I didn't. Disappointed, I returned home, then teleported to Sprite Springs, where I collected all of the ancient fruit for the rest of the day. On day 279, I tended to my animals before running over to the abandoned Jojima to finish the bundle. The Junimo disappeared into a bunch of stars and said that something good would happen. I then rode down to Marnie's to buy an auto grabber as well as two rabbits, which I named Yumper and Stump. I then took the bus to the Skull Caverns where I grinded for the rest of the day. In the morning of day 280, I tended to my animals before clearing out both of my greenhouses. I then decided to harvest the ancient fruit in Sprite Springs and say hello to apples before checking on the goods that the other Junimos were selling. After that, I went to the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies and relaxed for the remainder of the last day of summer. Day 281 was the first day of fall, so I tended to my animals before dedicating the rest of the day to getting a large paddock of crops down. So I rode over to Pierre's and bought 281 seeds as well as fertilizer. It took me until almost midnight to get everything fertilized and half wooded, so I thought that I'd better start getting my crops planted until I realized that I'd bought red cabbage. Red cabbage does not grow in fall. This was not a good start to the season. I forgot to record on day 282, all I did was plant a bunch of pumpkins and watch a film. On day 283, I tended to my animals before clearing out both of my greenhouses. I then rode into town to buy some seeds off Pierre, which I went home and planted. I then teleported to the Galdoran continent where I bought some buff potions and ventured out into the Badland. After killing a bunch of monsters for loot, I returned home, planted some ancient seeds and rare seeds before heading off to bed. In the morning of day 284, I aged some wine, then placed a bunch more kegs that I filled up with pineapples. I then spent the rest of the day setting up a massive tree farm to get a bunch of wood. When night fell, I decided to finish off the day by crafting and placing a bunch of recycling machines. On day 285, I tended to my animals and cleared out my greenhouse before heading into Pierre's to buy a catalog. And using my catalog, I spent the rest of the day trying my best to decorate my house. By the time half past one came around, it was looking terrible, so I gave up and went to bed. I spent all of day 286 trying to decorate my room. I tried a forest style and an ocean style, but ended up giving up on a birch light wood style. I also decided to leave the designing to someone else next time. 
Day 287 was Morgan's birthday, and since they were a new NPC, I was determined to gain their friendship. So I decided to dedicate the day to getting them a loved gift. First, I tended to my animals and planted some ancient seeds before grabbing a void egg for Morgan and a purple mushroom for the wizard and teleporting to the wizard's tower. They weren't there, so I spent a large majority of the day searching through the forest west for them. Eventually, by half past five, I found them meditating and gave them their gifts. I felt very achieved when I went to bed that night. On day 288, I was seeking true speed, and luckily for me, the day before, I had purchased three potions that had one stat in particular that I was very interested in, plus eight speed. So I quickly tended to my animals and cleared out my greenhouse before teleporting to the Crimson Badlands. I drunk one of the potions and stepped outside. I could now run faster than every mob times two. The only problem was when I ran out, all the monsters would catch up to me. After speeding around for a little longer, I decided to stop wasting the potions and returned home. In the morning of day 289, I realized just how much time that I was wasting riding around the massive expanded map, so I decided to dedicate as many days as it took to getting two obelisks, the one to the mountains and the one to the ocean. The only thing I needed was money, one million to be exact, so I got grinding. And finally, on day 295, I had 900,000 gold and a paddock filled with pumpkins, so I got harvesting. Midway through, I saw that I even got one massive pumpkin, which was pretty cool. Then I did something despicable. I sold all of my pumpkins to Pierre. Yes, I do apologize. After getting all of my money, I went back to my farm, grabbed the resources, and left for the wizards before placing down my two new obelisks. I felt very accomplished that night. Day 296 was the Stardew Valley Fair, and this year I wanted to find out the maximum amount of star tokens that I could have, so I grabbed the highest quality items that I had and entered the festival. I ended up coming first, so I had an initial amount of 1000 star tokens. This was a good start, but nowhere near the maximum amount. So I got betting, and I eventually hit the max at 9999 star tokens. So I sold out the shop and went to bed. In the morning of day 297, I spent some time organizing my chests before tending to my animals and heading off to the Sprite Springs to grab some sweet gem berries. I then saw how many ancient fruit I had, so I placed a bunch of seed makers and put them in. After planting them all, I decided to go and visit the wizard at his tower, so I grabbed some gifts and teleported there. After saying hello and giving my gifts, I headed home and went to bed. On day 298, after tending to my animals and clearing out my greenhouse, I decided to get one step closer to perfection by shipping as many unique items as I could. So I took a look through my collections tab and got shipping. And by round 7, I had shipped a bunch of items, so I went to bed planning a trip to Ginger Island for the next day. In the morning of day 299, I placed some floor dividers to clean up my home before planting some more ancient seeds, then heading straight over to Ginger Island. There, I harvested my pineapples and blueberries, then cleared out my entire farm from fiber before planting a bunch of mixed seeds. I then tried to give a monkey banana, but I couldn't, so I just ate it. By the time 8 o'clock came around, I said hello to Leo before going to bed. And finally, it was day 300. Normally, I would spend a bunch of money on the last day, but today I was extremely poor, so instead I decided to dedicate the day to giving gifts to the villagers that I really liked. I then grabbed some gifts and gave them away. By the time 10pm came around, I had finished my gift giving and headed off to bed. Thank you all so much for making it to the end, but before you go, please go check out my Stardew Valley playthrough series, I spend way too much time subtitling it all. The link is in the description and also in my comment. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye bye, remember to subscribe.